Well, this morning, we're going to have lots of scriptures to turn to. So I hope you got your Bibles ready. And if you don't have one today, I'm certain they're going to put some things up on the screen for you as well. But this morning, we have a, a sermon that I think uh, is lacking a lot. And uh, it's been lacking here because I've never preached this sermon before. And with a lot of young families in here, this is something that you all need to hear. Uh, because uh, I can guarantee you a lot of the older folks that are in here, this was already a part of their life growing up. And uh, it needs to be a part of everyone's life because this is what the Bible says. It's God's Word. And how many of y'all like reading the book of Proverbs? Several of you? All right. And how many of you believe that the things that you learn in Proverbs are true and are right? You try to implement those things in your life. Well, I want you to know that the majority of what I'm going to share with you this morning comes from the book of Proverbs. And, of course, we know that Solomon is is giving us some things in there that are sometimes difficult to to do um, because... Uh, of the environment that we live in today, uh, this thing called humanism is alive and well in the church. Alive and well. In fact, you would probably be surprised if you sat down with someone and took a test of how you felt and how your values were really put together, how much humanism you probably have in your life And you think that it's Christianity. But a lot of it is humanism. Because uh, humanism has gotten into the church a long time ago. It may have always been a part of the church. But I think it's more so today. Because a lot of times, even though we know God's word is true. We as parents sometimes don't um, do the things that God's word says. We uh, don't apply to our family what God's word says. And when we don't do that, we know that we have departed from God's words and we've gone toward what man thinks is comfortable and what we think is best. In fact, before I pray this morning, I want to read this definition of humanism. It's an outlook or a system of thought attaching prime importance to human rather than divine. The emphasis is on common human needs and rational ways of solving human problems. Now, how many of you know that our God is irrational? Because He can solve a problem any any way He wants to. In fact, the way I deal with problems is this. I take my problems to the Lord. A lot of times there's arguments uh, that I could fight myself. And I used to have a director at Elmcroft that taught me this. She said, you can't fight every battle. Sometimes you just have to take your battles to the Lord. Because sometimes no matter what you say or what you do or what you think the Lord is wanting you to do, there will be other people who will oppose you, who will stand in your way. And in times like that, you know what I ask the Lord to do? Remove the person or change their heart. Remove the person or change their heart. Because I can forgive anybody. But it's the Lord who we have to stand in front of and have to ask forgiveness of when we're opposing His will, His way, His people. So as we think about what humanism has done to us as people and as a church, may we all within our heart at the end of this sermon be able to say, may the Lord's will be done and may I step out of the way Because maybe what I've been doing or maybe what I have been thinking has not been of the Lord. And I want the best for my family. And I know the Lord does too. So as we think about that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I simply come to you this morning asking that the power of your Holy Spirit would be in my heart, in my mind. Lord, that the things that I say, Lord, would come from you. Come from your word. Identify with your word. Not be my opinion. Lord, not to be the way that uh, I think things should be. Because that would be humanism. 
But Lord, may it be founded upon what your word says, because we know that your Holy Spirit is going to lead, he's going to convict, and he's going to guide in the same way that your scripture is written. Because we know that your Son, yourself, and the Holy Spirit will always agree. So Lord, I pray now that each one in here will have ears to hear. And Lord, that we would entertain what your word is asking us to do as parents this morning. For it's in Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to preach a message this morning on parental discipline. God's guidelines to parental discipline. And... I'd like for you to turn with me to begin with to the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. A lot of the times when we read Scripture, we think of Scripture at the age in which we are reading it. If you are a grown man, you think about your relationship as a grown man with your God. If you're a grown woman, you think about your relationship with your God. But we must also apply these scriptures to our children. Because we know that they don't just wake up one day and have to have a relationship with God. That God would like to have a relationship with them that is right from the very beginning of their life all the way until they draw their last breath. God is interested in you. Every second, every minute, every hour of the day, he's interested in you. He wants to be a part of your life, but there's one thing he wants you to do, to have the best life. He wants you to obey him. He wants you to listen to him and his word. And he wants you to institute that into your life, into the structure of your life, into your home, into your marriage, and in today's scripture, into your parenting. So here we see in Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and 8, it says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. For he sows to his flesh. What he sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. I think of Steve talking about when he has these rotten meat thoughts. Rotten meat, you're thinking about corruption. It's no good to you. It's nothing that's going to help you out. But it says here that he who sows to the Spirit, and it's talking about the Spirit of God that is within the believer, will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Now, if we had to stop there as a parent and ask a question, would you prefer for your children to reap fleshly corruption, rotten meat, so to speak, in their life? Or do you prefer for your children to reap everlasting life through a godly spirit? It's not a trick question. It's just a simple question. It really asks you this. Regardless of how hard it is to do the right thing, will you do the right thing on behalf of your child? Because you know that if you don't do the right thing and teach them the right things, that your child will grow up and be this man or this woman that we apply in this scripture to the one who either sows to corruption or will sow to everlasting life through the Spirit of God. Hey, we were responsible enough to bring our children into the world, right? Do you know what a big deal it is to make a human being? God gave us the ability to make a living, breathing representation of Him. And when we think about how important that is, shouldn't we want God's best for that child? Regardless of how hard it is in our lives to make that child into the person that God wants them to be, we should have a desire to do that. Would you say so this morning? So turn with me over to Proverbs chapter 13. (laughs) 
Today we're going to be talking a lot about discipline and the type of discipline that I'm referring to is a spanking. All right, moms and dad, a spanking. Humanism has brought everything except a spanking into your lives. And what I'm going to say here this morning is there are books that fill our bookshelves in the library. There's books that fill the bookstore shelves that tell you how to be a good parent. But if you're a Christian, the only book you need is right here. It's called God's Word. And it tells you in detail how to be a godly parent. And when I talk about a spanking this morning, I'm not talking about for every time your child does something wrong that you jump to a spanking. But what I am talking about this morning is God's Word instructs us if our children are willfully disobedient. If you've told your child no, and your child then in turn comes back and does exactly what you told them not to do, and a lot of times with a grin, a smile, or a sneer on their face. If you don't do it God's way, you are doing your child a disservice. Now, I can speak this this morning with a sincere heart because I followed this type of parenting model in the life of my daughters, and I'm proud of both of them. I'm proud of what God has made them into, and it's been hard when it comes to the discipline sometimes. I also had this style of parenting in my life when I was a boy, and it didn't kill me. It made me respect my mama and daddy and my grandma who disciplined me and made me love them even more. When my daddy drew his last breath, I was there. I loved him. When my grandma drew her last breath, I was there. I loved her. When my grandpa drew his last breath, I was there. I loved him. When my mama draws her last breath, I'll be there and I love her. And every one of them disciplined me the way that the Bible says you should discipline your child. So guess what? It's not going to hurt them. If anything, it's going to give them more respect for you and their grandparents. And it's also going to help them love you more in ways that you can't even understand. But here in Proverbs chapter 13, I want you to look in verse 24. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Proverbs 13 verse 24. And it simply says this, He who spares his rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him promptly. That word promptly means early. He who spares his rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him promptly. Now, as we talk about this, we're going to say things like... Uh, Rod, and we're going to say things like um, hit, or one of the scriptures might even say beat. But when the scriptures are talking about that, it's talking about not trying to harm your child, but yes, inflicting a little bit of pain on your child, because that's what's going to break that little sinful spirit that is within them that willfully wants to sin. And I'm going to connect that and us as parents today to if we don't do that, then when God starts to try to connect or, or correct your children later on in life, they're not going to be able to identify with God. And then there's going to be some repercussions because of that. So this morning we have to understand in this, does your discipline per scripture show that you love or hate your child? Because this scripture here says, if you love your son or daughter, you will not spare the rod. But he who spares the rod hates his child. So I ask each of you as a parent sitting here this morning, are you parenting when it comes to this, the way that God says you should for a child that is willfully not listening to what you say? I want to pull out this little old uh, survey that I looked at. Now, this is five years old, 
and it talks about parenting in America. It was just printed May of 2019, and it says, The survey suggested that a majority of children in the U.S. were not subject to corporal punishment in 2014. It goes on to say, To get information on corporal punishment for the following questions, these were asked to 0 to 9-year-olds and for 9-year-olds to 17-year-olds. And it says, sometimes kids listen to their parents pretty well, and sometimes they do not. Thinking of the past year about how often have you had to spank your child to get him or her to behave. Then it asked those that were older, how many times during the past year has your parent had to spank you to get you to behave. And it comes down to this. The combined rate of spanking for the whole 0 to 17-year-old sample was 37% of parents. Only 37% of parents said that they gave their children a spanking. Girls less likely to be spanked than boys. I understand that because that's why I was given was two girls by the Lord. But it makes it harder on you, Dad, when you have daughters. It really does. And it says, among the zero to nine-year-olds, the, North, the Northeast and the Northwest had clearly the lower rates of spanking, 40%. And the South was distinctively the highest at 59%. Now, I would like to think that because we live in the South that we still respect God's Word. And we understand what the Bible says about sparing the rod and spoiling the child. But I would, I would dare say that it says this did not, it didn't matter what level of education you were, uh, other than caregivers that had graduate education were less likely to spank their children. Because, you know, whatever reason, humanism, I'm just going to say, is interjected into that a lot of times. But it says, in terms of family structure, there was little difference between single parent and two parent families. The survey suggests that the majority of children in the United States were not being spanked in the past year. And then it says this, the decline in spanking is consistent with declines in other forms of, listen to this word, violence against children and in society at large. So I ask you this question, could it be because spanking is being taught as violence instead of a way that God gives us to discipline our children that we do not do what the Bible mandates us to do. We don't want people to think that we are committing violence against our children. Therefore, we want to please the people more than we want to please our God. And we're, we're going to go on and see what Scripture says about this. But I want to just say that uh, here in Proverbs, he keeps showing us that our loving discipline should be modeled after God's loving correct, correction. In the scriptures that we're going to read this morning, it talks about God correcting us, but he does it because he loves us. How many of you got a spanking when you were a kid and your mom or your dad said, I'm only doing this because I love you? And as a child, you don't connect those dots. But as an adult, you say, thank you, Mom. Thank you. Thank you for the hickories. Thank you for the hands. Thank you for the belt. <laughs> thank you. You won't kill your child to spank them on their behind. You won't. Trust me, I know. Let's turn over to Proverbs chapter 3 this morning. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 11 and 12 tell us, My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father the son in whom he delights. The Bible tells us if we delight in our children, we have to discipline them. We can't just let them run and do what they want to do. We can't let them be the parent and them tell us what kind of punishment they want. Because guess what? Those that raised your hand, you would have never asked your mom and dad to give you a spanking. So your children are not going to tell you, hey, just go ahead and spank me and get it over with. They're not going to do that. They want time out. 
They want an electronic device taken away from them. They want all these easy things that they already know they can cope with. They just go back to the old iPod when you take their new one away. It's under the bed, collecting dust. They're smarter than you are a lot of the times. You just don't know it. But the scripture tells us that the Lord loves those who he corrects. But the Bible says that we are to love our children the same way that God loves us. So I'm asking you this morning when we're talking about spanking and discipline, do you love your children enough to do it God's way? You may have many reasons why you don't. And all I would say to that is humanism. I have spoken. Period. But what does the scripture say about discipline promptly? We saw there in that one scripture it says that we should discipline right after the offense. Why? Why is it important for us to discipline our child right after the offense? This very thing. So that your child connects what they've done wrong with the punishment. And if they have inappropriate behavior, they understand that that's why they got the spanking. That way they don't want to do it again because they know what's coming. Real popular sermon this morning, I can tell. Yeah. I will not be shaking hands this morning. (laughs) But it's true, isn't it? Proverbs chapter 23, verses 13 and 14 says, Do not withhold correction from a child. For if you, here's that word, beat him with a rod, he will not die. You shall beat him with a rod and deliver his soul from hell. How many of you want to deliver your child's soul from hell? How many of you willing to get a hickory or your hand or a belt or a paddle? My daddy had a good long paddle one time. had Jason written on one side and Roger written on the other. It was on top of the refrigerator. I think Jason's the only one that got it. But really, the scriptures, we laugh, but it's true, isn't it? Because a child that is left without discipline is going down the wrong path. And a lot of times will not surrender their life to God later on. Because they've been the master of their own life ever since they were a child. You see, we don't do our children a service, but a disservice when we don't discipline them. In fact, this scripture tells us that we don't do it to cause pain. and We, don't, we do it to cause pain, but we don't do it to injure. I tell you, it stings. It will make your child cry. And it will make you feel bad, mom and dad. But God knows what is right for your child. He sees your child's life down the road where you can't see it. All you're thinking about is, man, I've had a great day, and now I've got to come home and give my child a whipping. And you don't want nobody else to know you gave your child a spanking either. I mean, many of you have heard all these tales about what DSS will do and all this kind of thing when you don't even know what's behind all that. You just get scared. It's like witnessing. You hear about how some people might turn you down and react, and it just keeps you from witnessing altogether because you don't want to experience something that's negative in your life. But this is Scripture that we're talking about. So I ask you this. When we use that instrument of sufficient strength, whatever it might be, to spank our child, Are you doing that or are you an overly permissive parent? The Bible does not call us to be abusers, but it does call us to be parents and it gives us the right way to be a parent. But I would guess that if you're not exercising what the Bible says about discipline, that you are an overly permissive parent. And I pray that it will not cost you or your child later on. The second thing I want you to see per scripture this morning is we are to discipline without anger. Now I know 
that your child can get you angry. It can bring the incredible hulk out in anyone. Especially when they are willfully disobeying something that you've already told them not to do. Maybe you've already told them three or four times. They know what buttons to push. They know how far they can push you. But I want you to see what Jeremiah, what, what it says here in the, the book of Jeremiah. So if you want to turn with me to Jeremiah uh, this morning, there's a scripture I want to share with you um, that talks about as a parent not correcting your child out of anger. Uh, it's talking about how God who loves us, he doesn't discipline us out of anger either because if he did, the consequences would be horrible. In fact, here in verse um, 24, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 24, it says, O Lord, correct me, but with justice, not in your anger, lest you bring me to nothing. Now, if we are comparing ourselves to a heavenly father in the way that we are raising our children or you as a mother are also taking that role as God to be the loving authoritative person in your life you can't discipline your child at the moment with anger because if not you would be like God here that would bring your child to nothing there's harm that can come into it if you are doing this while you're angry but he asked, Jeremiah actually asked God to correct him and correct him for what he has done. Correct me in a just way. And he knows that God's going to discipline, discipline him out of love when he asked for this. Now, if we turn back into the Old Testament to the very beginning, to the books of Deuteronomy, in chapter 8, there is a scripture that gives us kind of a definitive word on this. And I want to see if we apply logic, which is something that we use every day. If you're living life logically without God, you're living life wrong. But if you're living life with God, using the logic that God gives you through His Scripture, then you're living life correctly. And I want you to use life live with God and His Scripture correctly when we read this in Deuteronomy 8, 5 through 6. And it says here in this verse, it says, You should know in your heart that as a man chastens his son, so the Lord your God chastens you. Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in His ways and to fear Him. Now, if you take that scripture there, and it's talking about knowing in your heart that, that God is chastening you or punishing you in the right ways, as the Lord does, if we do things the way that God is asking us to do correctly, we know that when our children reach adulthood, they will not be that child that we read about or the adult we read about in Galatians that sows to the flesh. They hopefully will be that child that grows into adult that will sow and reap to the Spirit. But this scripture here is telling us that if we do not respond in discipline the way that God does, that we're not going to help our child reap to the Spirit, but we're going to help them reap to corruption. And when we help our children reap to corruption, what we are doing is one day when the Lord tries to chasten your child, as they get older, they're going to walk away from God. Because what they are experiencing is something so foreign from the way that mama and daddy loved them that they're not going to understand what God is trying to do for their own good. So this is why it's so important for us as parents to do things the way that God does it out of love even though it hurts us sometimes to have to do it so that one day when our daughter or our son has to make a decision of whether they're going to follow Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and he comes against them on something that they don't walk away from their faith because they don't understand discipline. Do you see where I'm coming from on that? 
If you don't set the tone, if you don't do it God's way and teach them promptly whenever they've done something wrong and you let them get away, get away, get away, get away with it, all you are doing, per the scripture we read before, is damning your child's soul to hell. And scripture tells us that. It's supposed to be hard. Life is hard. But we brought that child into this life. And we're responsible. If we know who God is and we're doing it God's way, we're responsible to do it out of love the way that God asks us to do it. Now turn with me back to Proverbs. And we're going to share just a couple more scriptures from Proverbs. From chapter 29. I know... That when God disciplines me, it's because he loves me. I know that as an adult. I connect the dots because my parents disciplined me because they loved me. I know it was hard. I know it was real hard. But God is not asking anything that we're not capable of doing in his strength and for his right reasons. Here in chapter 29, verse 18, it says, Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. But happy is he who keeps the law. A servant will not be corrected by mere words. For though he understands, he will not respond. Sometimes your child knows what is the right thing to do, and you just give them words. You know I'm right. You tell them over and over and over, and they do their own thing that they want to do. And the Bible says that sometimes we just do not respond to words. And that's when that willful punishment comes in. Here in chapter 29, verse 15, it says, The rod and rebuke give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. How many of you want to be shameful because of the actions of your children? It's God's word, isn't it? And it's true. It says in verse 17, correct your son and he will give you rest. Yes, he will give delight to your soul. I ask you this morning, would you rather your child give you shame or delight? Would you rather your child have you in and out of everything that just tears you all to pieces? Or would you rather have rest? Thirdly, I share with you this. Discipline, per the scripture, discipline your children while there is still hope. Many of y'all have small children that are between the ages of birth and nine-year-old. Of course, when it's a newborn baby, you, you don't discipline with, them, with a spanking. But I tell you, when those terrible twos and those threes come along, it's time. Because they are pushing your buttons from there until they leave your house. I ask you this question this morning. How many would say that their lack of discipline, especially when their child was young, has ended badly? You're reaping now what has been sown. And instead of being able to have comfort as a parent, a lot of what you're reaping because you didn't discipline correctly is hard. Perhaps you're not able to enjoy your life because you're still having to take care of your child. I've known people that are well into their 40s and 50s still living with moms and dads and don't seem to have a care in the world, but mom and dad does. In fact, we had a lady come by here, come by the church this week. I don't know where the parents are, but she's taking care of all her grandchildren. And they're pretty well telling her a lot of what they want to do. And grandma's struggling. She's just barely getting by. Emotionally, she is wrecked. And I can just about guarantee you that the grandchildren aren't that way. Don't be that parent that has to suffer that in your life. 
Proverbs chapter 19, verse 18. It says, Chasten your son, or you can put daughter in there, while there is hope. And do not set your heart on his or her destruction. Set the tone early to see responsiveness in your child's life. Giving your child correction is an act of faith as a parent. It really is. Because when we step out on faith, most of the time we're doing something that is hard. We're doing something that we don't know what the answer is going to be, but we're trusting in God and we're stepping out on faith that whatever is going to come will be God's best. And we are asking also to accept that. <clears throat> so if we step out on faith and we do things God's way, God will take that faith and He will take it further and He will do more things with that child than what you ever could have. How many of you are proud of your children because they've grown up and God has taken them further than what you ever could have taken them? Many hands in the room. So I share these last two scriptures with you. Turn over to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5 and 6. It harkens us back to Proverbs 3, verses 11 and 12. When it says, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he gives a whipping, he chastens, and scourges every son whom he receives. Now, I said spanking this morning because that's the most extreme thing. But the least you should do is correct your child. There are times when all it calls for is correction. But as I said, when there is a willful disobedience, that's when the Bible says spanking should come into play. And when that comes into play, we should also understand that for whom the Lord loves, He corrects and He whips every son whom he receives. Every one of us at some point in our life is going to get a whipping from God because we're not doing it the way God would have us to do it. This last verse is from a man that understood a lot about life being good and bad. I invite you to turn to Job, the fifth chapter. As we read this, I want you to understand that if you will correct your children, if you'll discipline them the same way that God is talking about here, it will bring deliverance. It will remove foolishness from their life. Just ask my mama about that. And it will give you rest as a parent. How many of you want to have rest as a parent? I do. Here in Job chapter 5, verse 17 and 18, it says, Behold, happy is the man whom God corrects. Therefore, do not despise the chastening of the Almighty, for he bruises, but he binds up. He wounds, but his hands make whole. We see there in that scripture that the Lord does not withhold the thing, the pain into our life sometimes, but with that pain and with that correction, He brings something into our life that makes us love Him more, makes us love life more, and makes us love each other more. That's what this will do in your children's life. Because after all, responsible loving and spanking your child should be reserved only for willful disobedience. But, it should be done because God's Word says that it should be. Now, I'm simply going to do this this morning. If you have a son or a daughter,
I'm not going to ask you whether you are disciplining them well according to God's word. But what I am going to ask you to do is come to the altar and pray for your child. I don't care what age they are. Because you know in your heart whether you've been doing it God's way or whether you're wrapped up in the humanistic way of doing discipline at your house. But what I am going to ask you to do is come and ask the Lord to help you to be the parent, to do it God's way. And I'm going to ask you to pray for your children while you're down here. So if you don't hate your child, come to the altar right now. It's as simple as that. If you don't hate your child, come to the altar right now. And if you do hate your child, we're going to pray for you a whole different way. <laughs> because God ain't going to hear your prayers as long as you hating on your children. Doesn't matter what age you are. If you can't get down on your knees, sit on the front pew. If you can't get on the front pew, sit on the second pew. All right. Let's pray. Lord God, we come to you this morning asking you to help us to do what is right. Lord, the reason why so many don't is because we try to come up with so many different ways thinking that we are making our children better by doing it our way. Lord, many of us even go out to eat lunch or dinner and we brag to our friends about how we take care of discipline in our homes and we are still not doing it God's way. Yes, you might get results. But are those results temporal? And God help us if we are trying to do it our way. Lord, help us to be the mamas and daddies that Scripture says that we're supposed to be. Help us not to hate our children, but to love our children. And your word says that if we love our children, we are to chasten them the same way that you do us. Lord, we are to bring corruption, correction into their life. And Lord, sometimes that hurts. And Lord, if we are willfully not doing what you're asking us to do, Lord, just as adults deserve it, so do our children. Because that's what they are. They're little people coming up to be adults. And Lord, I don't know about everybody else in this room, but I want my child to be able to understand the voice of God. I want my child, when they do wrong, to understand the correction of God. And I don't want them to get so bent out of shape at God because they don't understand correction that they would walk a different way, join a different faith, or just stop worshiping you altogether. And Lord, I believe that we are living in a country today and we're seeing that. Because mamas and daddies have not been the moms and dads that the Bible has told us to be. Because we had not done the things that we're supposed to do. We already have second and third generations that are atheists, agnostics, following after other faiths and other gods. Because grandparents and parents didn't do what they were supposed to do 50 years ago. Help us not to add fuel to that fire. But help us, Lord, to get through the hardship of it, to do what is right, loving our child just as you love us. Lord, give us the strength. Lord, help us to know what to do and when to do it. May we always go to your word. May we always pray and consult you. Lord, may we never believe that our own way without consulting you is the right way. But may our prerequisite always be, what does God's word say? Lord, because I love my children, I want to do it your way. Lord, I pray that each one who have bowed a knee, or bowed a head this morning, Lord, feel the very same way about their children and their grandchildren. Don't let our love 
give them a confused signal because it's not the way God loves. Help us to be more like you, Lord. Help us to show them love through discipline. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to pray and to call out your name and ask for your help. Lord, for each person that is bowed here this morning, may we take this of the utmost seriousness. Because the scripture says it would save our child from hell. And I don't know anyone here that wants to be so complacent that they would doom their child to that place. May we do it early. May we do it for the right reasons and may we do it without anger. Lord, we ask for your help. For it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.